get a piece of paper, grab a piece of paper, uh, find a, a sticky pad, find a notebook, find a crayon, find something to write with, whatever works, whatever's closest to you. And while you look for that, I'll, I'll tell you about myself. So my name is Amanda Flood. I'm a licensed therapist and a woman in business mindset coach, um, as well as a mom, a wife, and like most of you, a jack of all trades. As a therapist in particular, I specialize with, you know, working with people affected by trauma, depression, anxiety, and particularly for uh, people of color. Um, and I have a passion for mental health. I'm the one person might, that might say, I love hearing your problems. Um, and I also love to let people know that it's okay. Like mental health is an everyday thing. Um, and I really want to normalize that. If you're on Instagram, definitely follow me at Therapy is Dope. Um, we put out a lot of material so that folks can really understand the power of their mind and the power of good mental health. Uh, as a coach, I infuse all of my therapist skills to really help professional women master limiting beliefs and move from fear to success and live their lives with confidence, right? That's just a little bit of what I do. Today, I'm really honored to be with you guys to bring some of that magic to you and help you all get out of your head. That's our piece today, get out of your head um, and get past, you know, some of the mental mess that might be getting in your way. All right, so back to your papers. So in the next 90 seconds, let me get my phone and my timer here. I want you to write down everything that comes to mind. All right, so let me get my little timer set up for 90 seconds. Uh, da, 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 da. So on your marks, and it could be anything. It could be what's on my mind now from lunch to man, I didn't have time to eat my lunch to what I'm worried about tomorrow, what I'm worried about later, whatever is on your mind, I want you to just allow that to just kind of flow on the paper with no restraints, no constraints, no limits, and nothing like that, okay? It could be forever to get a minute and 30 seconds on here. Okay, on your marks, get set, go. So keep allowing those thoughts to flow. Could be things that you're worried about. Things you wish you could do, whatever comes to mind. Have about 30 more seconds. Five seconds. Okay, so that is time. Put your pencils down, no cheating. So I don't know if you guys even know this, but on average, we have about like 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day, right? And the majority of them a negative, but we often don't even pay attention to them, right? It just kind of zips through our head and we zip through our day. Um, and it seems like nothing but a thing. And it seems like something that, you know, shouldn't even be a thing, but it, it actually really is. And I'm kind of curious for you guys, what were some of the thoughts that came up for you? If you could please share that in the checks, I just want to see where we're at and what kind of things are popping up for you. And I'll take a look at it. So in the chat, if you could share some of the things that you wrote down, and it's okay if I'm thinking about dinner. Thinking Amanda, about I'm just chiming in to let you know, for some reason, I think because we have multiple co-hosts right now, they have chat, the chat's limited to just you or me. So they everybody won't be able to see what's coming through. So you might want to- That's okay, yeah, I'll share. So yeah. if it needs to be in that, I guess, in, instead of to everyone, if it needs to be to Amanda, is that what it needs to be? All right. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. So it'll probably come to you. And then if you want to share out loud. No problem. 
So I have a lot of patience. So I'm going to wait for you to share, guys, okay? Just drop it in the box. Yep, so we have some things like relationship issues. We're thinking about tomorrow and planning ahead already. How to turn my atmosphere into a more positive one. Yeah, thinking about the world around us. Worried about rising COVID cases. Thinking about the world around us in our house, in my apartment, and <laughs> is it clean? Uh-huh. Yep. The word mental mess is resonating for some of us, career moves, right? And I'm sure even with the things that you guys are sharing, like there's even like more thoughts behind that, right? Because the beauty of our thoughts is that it's usually just never one, right? It's not just one and it stops. It tends to be a whole train wreck of thoughts, right? So you know, I'm nervous about this event or what's going to happen. Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, I was nervous about getting on on time. <laughs> So yeah, and I mean, we probably didn't even realize how much was on our mind just from, you know, the last 30 minutes to now, or even in the last like day to now, how much is really going through our head and how much sit with us. Um, but I want you to really recognize that, you know, your thoughts are powerful. You know, thoughts are kind of like that inner conversation uh, that you have with yourself. It's, or I like to say a lot, it's kind of the story that you tell yourself, right? And it really impacts how you feel and what you do, you know, so for example, if I'm expecting to do, let's say I'm this presentation, right, and I'm thinking about this presentation, I'm like, oh my God, like, you know, is it going to be okay? You know, is it going to be what people need to hear? Um, oh my God, I don't know if I have time to put it together because I've got to, you know, I'm thinking about the kids and I got to work and, you know, I have clients, how am I going to fit this in? You know, if I start thinking about the magnitude of that, right, now those are all of my thoughts, how do you think I'm going to feel? Am I going to be excited about doing this project or doing this presentation? No. <laughs> I'm going to be dreading it, right? Because I'm already anticipating that it's a lot of work. I'm anticipating it's going to be hard. I'm anticipating it's going to be, you know, it's going to suck. You know, so all of that now changes my mood. So I'm not excited. Maybe I'm nervous. Maybe I'm worried. So just from that thought about what's going to happen, now my mood has shifted, right? And now it's going to affect what you do. So it's my thought, it's my mood or how I feel, and now it's the action. So the action isn't, well, let me dive into this and let me go get it. Because I'm feeling a little bit concerned or I'm worried about it, the action is more than likely I'm not going to do it, right? I'm going to put it off to the last minute, right? Or for some people, they may talk themselves out of doing it because they're so worried. So the action or what they do changes, okay? So just a quick connection between what you think can affect how you feel and what you do. And again, going back to this idea that our thoughts are very powerful. And as you see, it could be very limiting too, because it can stop you from doing things that are really important in your life. And, and that's why I, you know, I really like to look at it because for the most part, it does get in the way of us doing things um, and how it shows up in particular. It may be like, I'm really anxious about something. It may be procrastination, right? Where we put things off to the very last minute because we're dreading it. Um, it may show up as like that imposter syndrome. Everybody kind of knows that word, right? Where it's like, girl, you know, you got this. Oh, dude, you know, you got this. But I've, all of a sudden, I'm a hot mess. <laughs> and I don't think I could do it, right? You know, I'm not stepping up to the table. I'm all of a sudden quiet in a meeting. Um, I'm not getting my projects done. You know, that's what happens when we start to overthink and we start to overthink in a way that's unhelpful to us, okay? So specifically going back to the thoughts, it may sound like, I'm not good enough. And you can let me know if any of these resonate for you. It may sound like, who am I to think like this? Or who am I to even think I could do this, right? Like, what do I look like getting up and doing a presentation, <laughs> right? Or this is too much for me. What do I look like planning a whole summit, Dana? <laughs> right? So, or, you know, I can't depend on anybody. Like, I have to do this all myself, right? Or they're going to judge me, right? So because of that, I'm not going to put myself out there. So that's what that story may sound like in your head is this constant run of 
negative and unhelpful thoughts. And every human has it. I have to tell you that it's not just one particular person or um, and it, it's not just you. We all have it at certain points, but it's really all about what we do about do with it. Um, for a lot of people, the consequences of that unhelpful thought um, and feeling is in action. And that's the problem, okay? Because inaction means you stop moving forward, you stop moving forward on those goals, you stop moving forward on those dreams. Um, so I really want you to recognize, you know, how you think about things can really keep you hostage from your own success, right? So if I'm not tuned into what I'm thinking, I could be tripping up over myself and getting in the way of my own self because I'm not paying attention to those unhelpful thoughts. So here comes another question for you, because I like y'all to do the work. I can't be talking to the whole work the whole time. So what would you be doing if you didn't second guess yourself? And I want you to put that in the chat. And I want you to put it out there, because sometimes you put a spotlight on it, it makes you feel some kind of way, and you're more likely to be motivated to do it, OK? So in the chat box, what would you be doing if you didn't second guess yourself? I want you to really spend a, a couple seconds on that, but write it out there. What are those goals? What do you want to do? What would you be doing if those thoughts didn't get in the way? Flying, I love it. What would you be doing? Investing more in myself, okay? Mm -hmm. Keep popping them in there. What else would you be doing if those thoughts were not getting in the way? If you were getting in your own way, starting a private practice, well, you better come on. <laughs> People need you out there speaking out more. Yet, yeah, listen, showing up is one of the hardest things to do. And a lot of those thoughts will kick up around being visible because it means someone is looking at me. It means someone is judging me, right? And all of that, we start to, to, to kind of shrink back a little bit. So it makes sense that the thought of putting yourself out there can be scary. Um, continuing with my degree, absolutely. Ooh, instead of changing to easier goals. Yep, so you're second guessing your ability to do it or to handle it, right? Honestly, I'd be doing the same thing, yep. Okay, I see someone says, sometimes I think self-doubt actually helps. Hmm, if I had time, I'll dive into that, but I don't. <laughs> but thank you so much for sharing and keep putting it out there, discussing my ideas more at work, absolutely. Right, my whole life would be different, yes! You know, how much more could I be doing in big ways, relationship ways, house ways, career ways, business ways, you know, if I was able to kind of check those thoughts. So that's what we're going to get into next. You know, how do I get out of my head, right? Um, I'm going to break it down, I think, into, into three steps. So the first is going to be think about what you're thinking about, right? And that's where we started with this. We started with taking a second, 90 seconds, actually, to think about what you're thinking about, right? And you know, that's what that's where you start. It's becoming aware, you know, notice what you are saying to yourself. What is that story? What is that DVR playing back in your head, especially when you're facing a challenging situation, because that's when it kicks up the most. But that's when I want you to pause and take a look at everything that you're saying to yourself. So that may be stopping for a minute before you go into the meeting and think about what's playing in your head. That may be just like we did stop and write and write down all the things that are coming through your head right before you study for an exam before you approach that project or while you're procrastinating take a few seconds and write it down so that's the first step becoming aware of your thoughts think about what you're thinking about the second step is ask yourself is it true so i want you to pull out some of the thoughts that you're thinking and almost like a detective like dive into that thing dissect that thing how true is this right how true is it that i'm gonna suck it up Right. And there might be a little bit of truth in there, but that's OK. But if you can find examples of where you've done the opposite of that, then more than likely the thought is not true. OK, so, you know, how true is it that I'm going to suck it up at the presentation? I've done a lot of presentations before. Right. So more than likely you're going to be OK. Right. More than likely you're going to know when you're sucking more than anybody else. And if they don't know, then it don't count. So, you know, so once you start to question it and find other reasons to let you know that it's not true, you know, that that's really a, a key way to start moving past those unhelpful thoughts. OK, um, so I really, again, want you to look at what are the unhelpful stories that you're telling yourself? Um, are those stories true? And if it's not true, if it isn't serving you anymore, then that's a thought you need to let go of. OK. Um, you know, sometimes people ask me like, well, why am I even like this? And I don't even understand it. 
And, you know, a lot of the stories that we tell ourselves come from like our past histories. You know, um, a lot of the mess tripping up your success comes from often your families of origin. I don't want to knock your family, but <laughs> that's where a lot of this starts because we spend so much time with our family um, and also because of other things that happen around us in life, you know, through the course of life, um, our, our different events and different experiences shape who we are and it shape how we think about things. So your inner stories are influenced by your past, your environment, your circumstances, and the stories that you've decided to hold on to, okay? So we can't control all of what happens around us. We can't control other people's choices and what they do and what they say, but we can control what we think about it and letting go of it, okay? So if you're finding there are stories that you've been holding on to, um, and yeah, you know, it might have been this one's fault, and I wish they didn't do this, and blah, blah, blah. You're spending a lot of energy outside of yourself on things you have no control over. Switch that energy back to you and start to think about how can I think about this differently? How can I let go of it so I can keep moving on and, and being successful in whatever way that means for you? Because um, the the truth is it, it's really about what you believe and you know other people can't make you believe that's your choice right so you've got to start to believe some different things um, so that we can kind of get rid of those fears and those doubts and those insecurities okay um, touching on fear a little bit you know if your mindset is really fueled by fear um, fear is something that is likely to keep you stuck right? And it's likely to keep you in a very comfortable space. Like the person who said, instead of signing up for, you know, higher courses, they take the lower course, right? Because that's fear. I'm afraid of if I can do it, right? Um, but the problem is, it'll keep you in this box of just like existing and going through the motions instead of really living life, okay? And fear is nothing but a thought. It's what am I thinking that makes me believe that this has to be scary, if that's not serving you, you've got to change the belief and let go of that story, okay? Um, all right, so I'm all about the work. So here comes another question for you. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So I want you to think about your own stories. And I want you just for a few seconds to think about that and answer the question, how do you see your own stories, your past stories getting in the way? So how are my stories getting in the way? And it could be, you know, I uh, grew up with ba ba ba, and that's why I believe ba ba ba. Or I've seen ba ba ba, and that's why it's ba ba ba. Okay. Oh, someone says fear equals false events appearing real. Look at y'all. That's a good class. <laughs> yes. Yes. Not everything you believe is true. Not everything you think is true. Oh, so someone shared, you know, grow, growing up in the conservative South and dealing with racism and believing it's okay not to speak out. Yeah. So you, you, you were raised that way and I'm sure it had a purpose and an intention, right? It could have been maybe to keep you safe, right? Um, or it could have been because the, the standards were you, you weren't good enough or okay enough to speak up, right? And so whatever things you decided about that, that was true, which happens so quickly and subtly in life, you often live that out presently, which may mean there may be situations where you feel uncomfortable, especially maybe around race or um, where there feels like there's a power in difference where it's harder for you to speak up. And that comes from just kind of growing up in that situation. Good one, good one, good one. Thank you so much for, for, for sharing that. Um, and so whatever it is for you, I want you to keep looking at it and keep um, investigating it, right? I see another one here where, like, based on gender roles, you know, girls were supposed to do da 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 da, da right? Or boys were supposed to do blah, 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 blah. So you grow up thinking that that's what the case was. I remember I used to think, like, doctors were men and nurses were women. <laughs> and that was it, right? Because my mom was also a nurse, right? And before I realized, I was like, oh, they could be both, <laughs> right? But if that's something I, I stuck with, then it would have been, there's only certain things that, you know, women could do. But sometimes, or as we know, that's not the case. Okay, we can do whatever we want to do. <laughs> um, 
so we have to kind of challenge sometimes our stories and kind of deep dive back a little bit, but at the same time, use it to kind of move forward uh, in life, okay? Because the, really the good news is that you can rewrite your stories. Whatever you've come to believe so far, it's really just about shifting your thinking around that, shifting your mindset around that, um, and aligning to the life that you want, right? So I don't have to be whatever it is everybody else said I'm supposed to be or how my life was or how I grew up. It's going to be hard to change it, but I can absolutely change it because your thoughts are powerful right remember that so i've got to just put in some new thoughts new ideas new beliefs um so step three how do we get out of our head so we have step one which is awareness we have um step two which is really kind of challenging those thoughts and taking a look at those stories and what it is that we've come to believe and now step three is getting out of your head now okay so how do i do that journaling is super powerful um and still with that idea of awareness i want you guys to just start writing just like we did in the beginning and you could start writing at night before you go to bed um like you could take notes and stuff on your phone but like writing it down accesses different parts of your brain and it works a little bit better than like typing it or putting it on your phone but you know for the sake of convenience whatever works for you but i suggest really physically rewriting things all right, so journaling is cool. Um, get around people who get you, okay? You know, you wanna feed your mind and you wanna feed your future. And you may not have had everything that you've needed up until this point, but it doesn't mean that you can't have it. Um, so you wanna be around people that get you where you wanna go in your life. If it's people that wanna take a higher class, then I've gotta be with people who take higher classes. I can't be with people who don't, cause then I'm I'm a roll with y'all, cause there's no inspiration, right? Um, <laughs> you know, the the best runners train with people who are better than them because they want to get better, right? It's easy to train with people that suck, cause then I'm always ahead. I'm not gonna push myself, right? I'm you're thinking I'm fly <laughs> until I get in a race and I lose. So you know, you want to get around people that are a little bit ahead of you, that know a little bit more, so they can give you that and they can pour into you so you can start to then change those stories and model it and do things a little bit differently. Um, all right, so journaling, get around some other people. And then I also want to say, introduce new positive thoughts, right? It's like affirmations is something that you can do um, it's great to put some positive messages around. And I, and I also think it's great to make it very like visible too. All right. So for example, if you think that I can't do something, the opposite to that is like, I am fully capable, right? And if you have affirmations that you love and things that you hold on to naturally, please put it in the chat box too. I know some of us are already into affirmations and things like that. So please share them. Um, I have one like on my desk right now. It says, I am not restricted by, by limiting beliefs. Right. And I keep these. There's some like cool cards. You can have them around or you can just write them down and, you know, have them in everywhere. The one behind it says, I say yes to opportunity and abundance. Right. So, again, I may suck. Right. I may hate doing speaking events. But if my affirmation is I say yes to opportunity and, and abundance, I'm saying this is what I want to do. Then I'm going to say yes before I think of all the reasons why I, sh I should say no. Um, someone said my latest is stop whining and start winning. <laughs> I like that, right? Because I want to do, okay? So if you're naturally inclined to think in the negative or to talk yourself out of things, and we are as humans, we absolutely are, um, I want you to start finding those positives. Find the ones that really resonate with you and hold on, hold on to them, right? I'm fully capable. I'm a perfect match for my ideal client. I can do all things, right? Um, and put them up where you can see them because, you know, visually it does something to see things uh, regularly. Um, so put it up. I like to say hide it in different places, like write yourself a note, leave it in your sock drawer, stick it in your shoe, put it in the, in the car, in the glove box, um, set it as a reminder on your phone or like an appointment that pops up on your phone, hide it in your lunchbox, stick it in your office. Like, so wherever you go at some point, you're going to find it because at some point you may need that reminder like each day is a new beginning, I get to start over that someone shared, right? And I may need to see it. And just by seeing it, my actions start to align. Because remember my thoughts affect how I feel, it affects what I do. So my mood starts to change and my doing starts to change. So you wanna put it where you can see it pretty regularly, right? If you're into vision boards and things like that, that's another dope thing to do. I have one that's on my dresser. So I see it every morning. When I'm getting ready, I read the quotes on there. I look at the pictures and the images. Um, and before I go to bed, I see it too, 
right? And it's been something that's been super powerful in my own life, right? One day I decided I wanted to be a marathoner um, and I had run before, but always like short stuff, right? I hated long distance. I used to lot of my coach to get out of long distance running. Um, and then I started running, just like chilling, didn't even think nothing about a marathon first. Actually, it wasn't even a thought. I just wanted to run again to be healthy. Then I found myself a group. Remember, get around ambitious people. I found myself a running group, right? Black girls run, I love them. Um, and I was looking at these women because they were ahead of me, right? So they were doing things like um, Ragnar's running in the mud, jumping over walls. They were running like 10 miles. Some of them doing marathons. I was like, what's wrong with y'all? I'm just trying to jog. I just want to stretch. And, but the more I was around them, the more things I started to try, right? I stepped out of my comfort zone, right? I've run at one o'clock in the morning in like the Adirondacks, a black girl in the dark. <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> And it's not something I would have done on my own, right? I would have thunk myself out of it, but being around other ambitious people allowed me to step out of my comfort zone, okay? And then one day I decided to run a marathon, right? And I just kept on working around people that did it and around people that just naturally encouraged me. And something that was never a concept and idea for me became that right? And despite being scared and nervous, because that's still going to be there, it doesn't go away. But I wasn't focused on that, right? And didn't keep me stuck. I kept moving because I was around folks that did it. I set my intention. I put it up. This is what I wanted to do it was on my vision board, actually. Um, and then I did that, right? In 2018, I ran a New York City marathon. I went from running 30 minutes to five hours and 10 minutes. That's how long it took me, right? But I did that. So, so whatever you want to do, start by looking at what am I telling myself? How can I change that? Who do I need to get around to help me? How do I need to nurture myself and change my thoughts and change my story and get out there and do that? Okay, so it's been my absolute pleasure. Um, my name is Amanda Flood. I'm not gonna lie to you, the work is hard, right? It's not always easy, but it's doable. Um, and Get, get, get help. That's okay. Get help, get support, but it, it is actually doable. All right. Again, it's my pleasure. Thank you guys. Amanda, thank you. Well, we have a couple of minutes. Is there anything else you wanted to add or take questions or anything I'll, like that? I'll, I'll take some questions. I just didn't want to go over my time. That's okay. That's okay. We got about two minutes. I'm going to put, put your information up on screen here too. So people can find you on Facebook and, um, yep. and Instagram. Make sure to follow me at therapy is dope. Um, and you can always reach out Amanda at amandaflood.com um, to email me or just visit the website. And, oh, and don't you know, forget you're going to be in, you're going to be including some stuff in the. Yeah. So in like the, um, the swag bag, swag bag. <laughs> um there is a, a workbook that i've included for everybody and it, it walks through a little bit better what i've been talking about it gives you some prompts to, again do the work and do the thinking um and to help you shift and get to the other side too okay so that's going to be there for you and i think we're giving away one of the courses or something like that later down the way too so stay tuned um i am in private practice i not necessarily accepting new new clients, um, but you can always email. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> um, uh, you guys are very much welcome. This very much resonated, Amanda. I mean, I have to say, I'm very fortunate that I've been in therapy for long enough to do some work, but I can always keep improving. So a lot of the things that you were talking about really spoke to me as well. And, yeah, listen, uh, I got you. I use my own stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> And I have to say, like, I don't want people to wait to need a therapist, right? Because right. therapy is really when, like, things are truly getting away that you can't function well anymore, right? It's messing up with school, it's messing up with work relationships, things like that. But we all need skills and we all need to develop our skill set. And we just don't get that everywhere in life. Um, and I think that's where you've got to partner with people. And that's where you've got to get, like, your support, your tribe. That, that, for me, that's where coaching comes in. It's about developing the skills um, so that it doesn't fall apart. And then I need a therapist. Okay? I hope that makes sense too. Thank you. I'm Thank glad you. it was relatable for you yeah, guys. It's absolutely. awesome. Um, well, okay. So if nobody has any questions or follow up, and obviously, like we said, we'll put some information in the post event materials and the email that's going to go out in about a week or so.